is the Tom Hartman Program. Welcome back to the third hour of our program. On the line with us is Andy Kroll, an investigative reporter with ProPublica, previously a D.C. bureau chief for Rolling Stone. He's worked for other publications like Mother Jones and The New Republic. He's got a new book out. It's called A Death on W Street, The Murder of Seth Rich and the Age of Conspiracy. His website is andy-kroll, K-R-O-L-L.com. And on Twitter, it's just Andy Kroll. Uh, and Andy, welcome back. It's been a while since we've talked. It's great to have you back on the program. Tell us about this dangerous digital forever war of far-right conspiracy theories. Where, where did this start? Oh, you could trace this conspiratorial mindset that seems so prevalent in American politics right now. I think, honestly, back to the moment that humans were capable of complex thought, too. <laughs> <laughs> the moment that we saw those shadows on the cave and started spinning wild theories about what those shadows might mean and who else might be in the you know the general world that we share. So conspiracy theories are as old as humankind, but this story that I tell in A Death on W Street is a thoroughly modern one. Some might even say a post-modern one, given some of the themes here. It really looks at the last four or five years when it feels like conspiracy theories haven't just been a, a, a sideshow in American politics or a substory, but have come in some ways to the center of the political world, have come to define certain politicians, certain issues that have faced the country. And I found this true crime story, the story of Seth Rich and his family, as a through line or a skeleton key, as I put it in the book, to try to unlock how we ended up in this thoroughly bizarre place in our So history. refresh our memories about who Seth Rich was and what happened to him, and then tell us how that's the skeleton key that unlocks everything else. Seth Rich was a 27-year-old who worked for the Democratic National Committee here in Washington, D.C. He believed in voting rights. He believed in this country and what it was capable of doing when everyone participated in democracy, novel concept. He was walking home from a bar on July 10th, 2016. He had been at a bar, he'd been out too late. He was walking home, talking on the phone in Northwest Washington and was shot and killed in what police have said over and over again was a classic case of wrong place, wrong time, uh, attempted armed robbery, and he was shot, killed, taken to a hospital, but unfortunately did not survive those gunshot wounds that he suffered. And instead of Seth Rich's life and his death uh, remaining a private family matter or something that remained in the circle of friends and colleagues that he had developed in his 27 years, it becomes something completely different, a viral meme on Twitter, a article of faith among supporters of the former president, and then eventually a talking, po talking point, excuse me, on Fox News. All of this circling around the idea that Seth Rich was a whistleblower or a leaker, that he was somehow responsible for all of those DNC emails coming to light during the 2016 campaign. Now, there's no evidence that that was, is true, was true, ever was true. Well, and that implies that the DNC had him killed because he was it releasing does. their secrets. It does. And it, it feeds into a conspiracy theory that has existed for long before Seth Rich, which was that, you know, the Clintons uh, are this notorious crime family that have killed between a few dozen to as many as several hundred people in their orbit over the years in this decades-long murder spree, which, of course, uh, would be impossible to do, and there is no evidence for this. But Seth Rich became a victim not just of a horrible, tragic crime in Washington, D.C., but of the modern culture wars that have engulfed so much of our politics. And the aftermath of his life and death becomes this huge international phenomenon that, again, spreads from Fox News, to the Trump White House, to the CIA, to the campaign trail. I think that if you want to understand something like QAnon, if you want to understand why we have so many candidates on the ballot in 2022 saying the last election was completely marred by fraud, 
understanding how this young man's life and death got twisted into something totally bizarre will help you understand everything that has come since. Now, this was an election year, 2016. This was the year, and, and this was the, the summer of 2016. I believe by that point in time, Trump was the nominee. Am I remembering right? You're spot on. Okay. So, and, and Trump was getting considerable help from the uh, internet research agency, this arm of, of, uh, the, of the GRU, of, of Russian intelligence. And we now know, I mean, there's a great piece in the, in the Times just over the weekend about how the Russian trolls you know, we're going after Linda Sarsour and others in the women's movement. Um, were Russian trolls involved in this, or is that an unknown at this moment? Russian trolls were involved in this. There <laughs> is evidence put forward by multiple congressional committees that IRA and similar troll farm activity amplified theories that the Clintons had killed Seth Rich. Now, there are I do not believe that there is any evidence, I haven't seen any, and I've reported on this for five years now, that Russia somehow originated or manufactured these theories about Seth Rich. As best as I can tell, flesh and blood Americans did that because they were skeptical of the Clintons and because they believed that there was something nefarious going on in the death of this young man, Seth Rich. But right. once this theory was out there, once it was circulating online, it did get amplified by a foreign adversary in the form of Russia for several months, at least, during that crazy 2016 election period. What does this tell us about how these uh, online-based conspiracy theories, or even not online-based, um, grow, develop, and, and does it give us any clues into how best to stop them or push back against them or change them or whatever? Yeah, I think that, that the Seth Rich saga is a case study in understanding how a conspiracy theory is kindled comes to life spreads and reaches in this case an audience of millions if not tens of millions of people it fox news is a big part of this book and if you know your audience tom wants to a real sort of behind the scenes look at a fox news scandal maybe the biggest fox news scandal i would highly recommend that they pick up the book but fox news does not originate something like this. Fox News is an amplifier. It is the mainstreamer of something like the Seth Rich theories or baseless claims that voting machines were rigged in 2020. This is what they did with critical race theory. Right? Exactly, but it did not start with them. They right, are the no. kind of ultimate validator on the political right, but not the originator. You have to look into these dark crevices almost of the internet. Online social platforms, social media platforms are where these things start. And if there's going to be any kind of reforms, any additional sort of due diligence to try to prevent another Seth Rich conspiracy, conspiracy theory or the next QAnon, you've got to look at ways to better oversee the platforms, in some cases to identify these groups early on before they can reach this mainstream audience on a Fox News or on a One America News or one of these louder megaphones. You've got to look in these corners of the internet where this kind of stuff starts. Wow, wow. Andy Kroll, investigative reporter with ProPublica. He's got a new book out. It's called A Death on W Street, The Murder of Seth Rich and the Age of Conspiracy. Andy Kroll on Twitter, andy-kroll.com on the internet. Andy, good luck with the book and thanks for dropping by and sharing your story with us. Always a pleasure. Thanks, Tom. Great talking with you. We will be right back. It's coming up on 15 minutes past the hour. Uh, back to your phone calls and uh, the dangerous digital conspiracy right after this.